Okay, so what about other components in the platform, like uh, databases, for example? So, as I said, there are uh, relational and no relational databases. Yeah, so no SQL databases <coughs> are like uh, mode du jour right now, and uh, more traditional ones are still in use uh, widely, uh, mostly in. Uh, highly critical business applications and an enterprise setting but MySQL of course is the tool of choice for many many web developers and MariaDB uh, that is produced by the team of original MySQL developers after it has been acquired by Oracle uh, it is very popular right now too uh, when we are dealing with .NET and uh, other types of Microsoft uh, world web applications we normally have MS SQL or MS SQL Express. There is always uh, the room for some Oracle products in the web application world, but that's that's really rare. Sometimes it's used, but uh, yeah, again, an enterprise setting most probably. Uh, no SQL databases. Some examples can be just because those two are seen in the wild uh, more often than others. Okay, so MongoDB, of course, is. Uh, a type of NoSQL database that is using documents, yeah, in JSON format. There is a JSON uh, document for everything, and uh, everything is a component, is a, is a key or value in the JSON in the JSON document. Okay, uh, and there is a scheme that uh, lets you orient through all that database. And there is Redis. Uh, Redis <laughs> is rarely protected. Uh, especially on the local network, but it's not uh, very useful um, in many cases for penetration testers. It's just a key value, like th these hashes, not crypto hashes, but hashes in terms of memory uh, management, right, in variable terms. So there are just keys and values associated with them. Uh, stored in memory and then dumped to disk uh, when they are not used uh, for a long time and then uh, read back to memory for faster access. So uh, Redis is rarely protected as I said and uh, there are some exotic ways to exploit that. I most probably will give you uh, just a link in order to process that information on your own. That's that's really that's really weird. It, basically, you can uh, rewrite a file. Yeah, the Redis database. Um, uh, the Redis database uh, stores data in, and you can do that uh, in a manner that it will contain your SSH public key as a result. Okay, so there was uh, a an attack like that, and uh, it basically resulted in you having remote access because uh, uh, SSH known uh, sorry SSH uh, authorized keys file is read by SSH daemon uh, quite freely, I would say. So it 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 doesn't matter where exactly your public key is in that file for you to be allowed access to SSH. Okay, so I will just give you a URL to the blog post that describes that vector of attack. Uh, of course, there is there is potential for exploiting Redis uh, further, but uh, it's not that obvious and not really popular in research and community right now. Uh, what about data exchange between different components? Of course, when we are dealing with um, a middleware or a front-end connecting to SQL database or no SQL database, uh, we most probably will just see that transport protocol uh, throwing queries and uh, returning responses uh, here and there, right? So that will be more or less uh, traditional. What's going on on the front-end to, to the client side, uh, though, is that uh, there normally it's just an HTML code, yeah, sent around just just in response to HTTP uh, requests that is still uh, in use, and that's more traditional and maybe demands less attention. What I want want to emphasize here is that um, more and more popular is this approach of just building a 
really heavy Angular JS or jQuery uh, front-end application that is like load uh, loaded into the browser yeah normally in a compressed form loaded from the server and then uncompressed to the browser and then run from the disk mostly from the cache yeah every time the application is used uh, and everything else is this uh, client to web service communication yeah either in a soap format in form of XML documents uh, going here and there or uh, rest full api and json packets uh, that uh, accompany the uh, api calls so uh, what you have to get from here maybe that's already not the platform thing yeah for you but uh, let's focus on that for a while right here maybe that's already a web application part that uh, i'm starting to describe because uh, that's uh, on a principal level, what you need to find on the platform layer is a vulnerability on the existing uh, product. Be it a programming language or a framework or a database product, uh, it's still the vulnerability not in the web application itself. Okay, It's something known or something you fuzz or something you have a private exploit for. You know, So it's still like you know, web server or operating system <clears throat> or something around that. But data exchange is already like the choice of web application. It's not uh, like defined by the web application, but uh, yeah, the application is still like a user for that, but uh, uh, already effectively employs the input it receives in that form. And this is already an entry point into the web application and entry point into the web application is uh, the attack entry point for us okay so every time we see a JSON packet is sent we see the values there okay we see the uh, variable names and the values in JSON format we can start fuzzing first values and then maybe even variable names if we know that they are processed once uh, received by the web application or web service okay so uh, in XML as well if uh, you see that uh, your input <clears throat> you provide to a web form for example is then sent to the web service in an XML form you can assume that uh, you can start tampering with the input yeah, in your proxy application like Burp Suite or OSB Zap right away. So, uh, yeah, remember that still it's it's maybe still at the platform level, but already can be used as an avenue for a pure web application attack.